This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I'm missing I'm missing two board members. Good morning, everybody. We're about to get oh uh my peeps look so great. Uh so we we need we need Commissioner Dawn. I'm gonna comment later, but not just yet. Okay. He, I think he said he's going to be a little late. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, well, let me do this. Then um, did you get that? The, I don't know. Check it. In. Okay, don't worry oh, about okay. it. Don't worry about it. So let me just say good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you who have signed on, we're going to start with um, our closed session, which is going to be at ten o'clock today, and then we will go forward with our um, development review division cases at ten thirty. So um, we're, we're going to go into closed session. So you don't need to be uh, here. Uh, we're going to go um there's a there's a link for that i guess so, so um so without further ado um we're gonna i am going to leave this room and go sign on you i guess you stay where you are so before we have a closed session then we'll come back um and and ratify okay if any okay thank you thank you Madam Chair, do we need a motion to go into yes, closed session uh, yes and thank you so much yes you do i'm telling you this is too much so Pursuant to Section 3-305 B3 and B7 of the General Provisions Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, we now need a motion to go into closed session for purposes of consultation with counsel and to discuss the acquisition of real property. Oh, boom. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, I'm looking at you. That's unanimous. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Chair, yes. I, I need, are we going to a different go to my meeting? Now, sir, uh, we will have some, yes, we do, We are. And, and I, I, we're going to get it to you. Okay. Okay. I don't we need a motion to come out of closed session. So move, Madam Chair. We have a motion and a second. Um, motion by yeah. Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Bailey and seconded by Commissioner Giraldo. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and that's a aye for you too, Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the ayes have it unanimous. Okay. So uh, we need a motion to ratify the action taken in closed session. Is there a motion? Don't move. Chair. Okay, so motion by Commissioner Geraldo, seconded by Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Bailey. Is there discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay, we have three ayes and myself. That's four zero. Motion carries four zero. Okay, so the planning board is back in open session, and again, every, to everyone who's in our uh, virtual audience, um, I am Elizabeth Hewlett, and I chair the Prince George's County Planning Board. And the planning board is now in session for Thursday, May 21st, 2020. Um, in an abundance of caution resulting from the global um, COVID-19 pandemic, this is the planning board's ninth virtual meeting utilizing on loan, online phone and video capabilities. During these challenging and unprecedented times, the commission remains steadfastly committed to promoting a safe and healthy environment for our public, applicants, stakeholders, and staff while we continue business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of the participation guidelines for the hearing. All of these websites and email addresses um, are depicted on the screen in front of you. The most important part is that for speaker pre-registration pre and for submission of comments and supporting documentations, all persons must pre-register by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the planning board at the address depicted on the screen and pre-submission of comments and documentation must also be submitted by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the meeting via the address depicted on the screen. Um, registered speakers and presenters com connecting through a computer or tablet or a smartphone can join the meeting with the link listed, um, below, listed there on the screen. Um, online participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software or in order to participate in the process. To listen or participate in the meeting using a phone line, uh, participants may dial the call-in number provided by the email. Um, we ask that all participants mute their phones when not speaking, but please do not put your phone on hold. To eliminate audio feedback, please have only one connected 
device with sound in the room at the same time. If you wish to watch meetings live, again, you can do that at the site depicted on the screen. Um, and the same thing, if you wish to become a person of record, it's there as well. So we thank each of you and appreciate your flexibility and cooperation during this time. As always, we commence our planning board meetings with a moment of silence for those who have passed on. Um, and we want to commence with the growing number of victims of the widespread coronavirus. Um, we would say stay in the state of Maryland is 42,323 confirmed cases and 2,123 deaths. In Prince George's County, it's been 12,916 confirmed cases and 413 deaths. These are human beings. They're not just statistics. We want to lift all of these folks in our thoughts and our prayers. We also want to acknowledge that those who have passed on from many different ailments, um, but two in particular who passed on from COVID-19. Wilson Roosevelt German, age 91, he's one of the White House's longest serving employees. He worked for 55 years and under 11 presidents at the White House, from um, Eisenhower to Obama. We want to remember him in our thoughts and prayers. Annie Glenn, age 100. She was a tremendous advocate and she was the widow of former U.S. Senator and, and astronaut John Glenn, um, who also died of, um, she died of coronavirus. We want to remember the victims of the flooding in central Michigan. Thousands are under evacuation orders, orders after two dams failed following heavy rains across the state. We want to remember the family and Tony Jones Esquire and family who lost his mom, Michelle Bose Jones. And Tony is a um, longtime attorney practicing in Prince George's County, and he's a staunch member of the J. Franklin Bourne Bar Association and the Prince George's County Bar Association. Um, Shad Gaspard, age 39, former WWE pro, died after getting caught in a rip current near Venice Beach, swimming with his 10-year-old son. And when people went in to save him, he said, just get my son. And the son was saved. He was not. Fred Willard, age 86, comic actor known for Roseanne, Everybody Loves Raymond. Ken Osmond, child TV actor known for his role as Eddie Haskell on Leave it to Beaver. Phyllis George, pioneering sportscaster and former 1971 Miss America, who was the first female co-anchor of the NFL Today pregame show. Beckett Etheridge, age 21, son of singer Melissa Etheridge, struggled with an opioid addiction. Bob Watson, first former MLB Major League Baseball player, coach, and executive. He was the first black Major League Baseball general manager to win the World Series with the New York Yankees in 1996. Lynn Shelton, um, film and TV director, directed episodes for Mad Men. John Patrick Mac uh, Mann, Mahone, excuse me, um, actor known for LA Confidential and many others. Frank Cullen Pepper Rogers, age 88, football player and coach. 1952 quarterback um, led Georgia Tech to the national championship. Frank Bielek, interior designer. Um, Jorge Santana, who was a guitarist for the band um, Malo, a younger brother of Carlos Santana. Greg Tyree Boyce, um, best known for his movie Twilight. Logan Williams, uh, actor only 16 years old, who played the young version of the superhero The Flash. Um, Jesse Freitas, um, age 99, quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers during the 1946 inaugural team and last surviving member of that team. And of course, our hearts go out to any of you in our virtual audience who may be sick or who may have lost loved ones. Um, and so may, if we may have a moment of silence for all of these folks. Thank you. Again, we're still in the month of May, and we celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Haitian Heritage Month, Jewish American Heritage Month, Military Appreciation Month, Near and Dear to My Heart, Older Americans Month, Family Wellness Month, National Bike Month, and National Fitness Month. But it's also a month that we are made aware and reminded of so many things, such as it is Lupus Awareness Month, ALS Awareness Month, National Allergy and Asthma Awareness Month, and it is Homeschooling Awareness Month, and many of you have become tremendously aware of homeschooling. But it is also Mental Health Month, which is all the more critical now amidst the fear 
the tragic loss of lives, the illnesses, the, the loss of jobs, the food insecurity, the loneliness, the isolation, the families forced to disconnect, and so much more. It is imperative that we take care of our mental health. So I note that in view of our isolation and our social distancing and the fact that, I, that our board members really miss each other and I really miss them, that we decided to do something to show our camaraderie today and that is why we were all sporting our baseball caps as a way of connecting at, um, and we're all doing it as a way of connecting and it, though we can't see each other and be physically present with each other. So, um, so that's why we're doing that. And finally, census. Let's go to our census. It is imperative that everyone complete the census. It, um, Prince George's County is finally creeping up. Um, it's at 61.1 percent, I think, and that's important that we've gotten that far, but we still have a distance to go. That means if we do not get our numbers up, we are leaving so much money on the table that in 2010 we lost $363 million that would have inured to our benefit. We are leaving money on the table that could go to hospitals, it goes to first responders, it goes to assessing how many people there are in a neighborhood, so should we need some, should an emergency crop up where you might need vaccines in your neighborhood, it will let you know how many are needed. We are shortchanged now and so on so many levels and some of that is our doing because we're not completing our census. So I encourage every one of you to complete your census and tell everybody you know to do the same. Um, you can go to, it's very, very easy, nine simple questions, my2020census.gov, my2020census.gov or, or the one depicted on the um, uh, screen here or you can just dial in 844-330-2020. I also want to give a shout out to the Department of Parks and Recreation for their grab and go program. We have provided lunches Monday through Friday every day of the week for several for at least a month or two now um, at, at three distribution sites, Marlow Heights Community Center, Oak Crest Community Center, Glen Arden Community Center. And there is a huge need for this food distribution given the food insecurity that we have throughout the nation in fact, throughout the world, but particularly right here at home in Prince George's County. So um, people can no donate, volunteer, or contribute um, if they so choose. Again, we thank everyone for your flexibility, your cooperation, and for rising to the occasion together to navigate this pandemic and to continue to propel Prince George's County forward. It is our hope that each of you stay safe, look out for one another, stay strong and resilient, and remain ever hopeful. Thank you. With that, I'm going to proceed with today's cases and I'm going to do a check to make sure we have everyone. So, legal counsel, David Warner, are you on? I am present, Thank Madam you. Chair. Um, Peter Goldsmith, are you on? Yes, good morning. Okay, good morning. I see we have our planning board members. I'm just going to acknowledge everyone publicly. We have Madam Vice Chair Dorothy Bailey. Yes. And we have Commissioner Shanice Washington. Present. We have Commissioner Manny Gervaldo. Yes, I'm here playing third base. And there we go. Okay. I won't go into my who's on first routine. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, um, Commissioner Dwarner, I believe, will be joining us a little later. Um, so, without... Without further ado, I'm going to go to the consent agenda. And before I ask for a vote, I will acknowledge that Plan and Board Resolution 2020-66 is being removed for the agenda, and that is for the detailed site plan 19020, the Landy property. So we're removing that totally from the agenda, and with the, with the exception of that resolution, is there a motion to, to approve the rest of the items in 4B and 4D? Madam Chair, I move approval of items in 4B and 4D. Commissioner Gerardo, second. Yeah. Okay, so motion by Vice Chair Bailey, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. I'm going to call for a vote. Madam Vice Chair. Vote aye. Um, Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. I vote aye. Okay, thank you. The ayes have a 4-0. I should acknowledge that we are here in our, um, I am virtual, I am in our, our hearing room, and I do want to acknowledge that we have, um, Kenny Flanagan, who's working the PowerPoint over here, doing a great job. We have, uh, um, 
we have our planning uh, planning director in the room. We have our planning board administrator, and we also have our technical hearing writer in the room. So, so we're all here at uh, a safe distance, donning our masks. Um, so without further ado, are we... Uh, okay. So without further ado, I'm going to proceed with um, item 9, which is the SDP 1802 for Brandywine Village Commercial. We have a request for a continuance until June 18, 2020. I'm going to do a check to make sure that we have the persons um, necessary. Adam Bossi, are you on? Present, Madam Chair. Okay. Jill, Co thank you. Jill Kosak, are you on? Present. Okay. Kim Finch, are you on? No, Kim Finch? Okay. 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 Madam Chair, this is Megan Reiser for Environmental Planning. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just going down the list that I have. Okay, we may not need these folks. Um, Glenn Burton or Paul Sun, are you here? Glenn Burton is here. Okay, thank you. Paul Sun? Okay. Um, Tashara Burgess? Present, Madam Chair. Thank you. Jennifer Jackson? Jennifer Jackson, are you on? Okay. So uh, I don't hear anything. Um, you, uh, she, I don't know if she has a, a number. Uh, um. Present. Oh, you present. Are, Ms. Jackson, you, that's you? You're present? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Sorry thank you. That. Okay, no worries. Okay, so right now what we have before us is a request for a continuance. I'm going to turn to Mr. Bossi. Yes, thank you. Good morning, uh, Madam Good morning. Chairwoman. For the record, um, my name is Adam Bossi with the Urban Design Section. Uh, as you mentioned, this is Item 9, the Specific Design Plan, SDP 1802 for Brandywine Village Commercial. Uh, please, I do want to point out that several backup items were submitted prior to yesterday's 10 a.m. deadline. Uh, were included in your additional backup and posted to the website. Uh, these, this included a PDF with four emails from residents submitted in opposition to the application, as well as the request for continuance from the applicant's attorney. Um, as you may recall, this case was continued from your April 23rd meeting to today. And as presented in the continuance letter submitted May 19th, the applicant is requesting to further continue this matter to June 18th. Uh, this continuance request is in response to the County Council's recent passing of CR 35 2020, which extended the public health emergency in the county. Uh, and as far as, as part of that, further suspended their activity as the District Council until at least June 1st. Uh, so the applicant in this case is awaiting a final order on the underlying comprehensive design plan revision, CDP 120101 from the District Council. So this continuance request, as with the last one, was made to uh, essentially accommodate uh, this action. Uh, for these reasons, staff does support the continuance request. Uh, and I do want to point out two additional items for your attention related to this. Uh, first, the applicant's attorney uh, yesterday afternoon uh, did submit a uh, letter seeking to clarify their 70-day action period waiver request that was previously submitted. Okay. Uh, the, the first version of that was submitted on April 23rd, okay. uh, but it was not specific in terms of the length of that extension. Uh, so yesterday afternoon, we did receive a letter clarifying that, seeking to extend the action period to July 31st. Okay. Again, really to coincide with the continuance request okay. in District Council uh, pending. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we had something, a, a waiver or something. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Let me see if the board has any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair? Not at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Geraldo? I have no questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tasha, t excuse me, Tashara Burgess? I have no questions, Madam okay. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Jennifer Jackson? No, no questions. So, okay, so we're going to vote on the motion to continue to June 18th then. 
Uh, no one has any, any comments or anything. Okay. Um, um, is there a motion to continue? I move the request for continuous to June 18th. Commissioner Geraldo, second. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Um, I'm going to call for the um, actual vote. Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, the, so this matter will be continued until the June 18th scheduled planning board meeting. Thank you, everyone. Okay, next we have item 10, which is the uh, renewal of four reservations that will expire on June 30th. And let me make sure we have everyone. Um, Tom Maysock? Present. Um, Brian Barnett Woods? Okay, well, Mr. Maysock, you've got it then. Okay, that's just the name we were given. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. So go, go ahead, um, Mr. Maysock. Okay, uh, agenda item 10 is for the uh, continuation of reservation for four properties. Uh, these, these reservations will expire on June 30th, 2020. Uh, there are two properties that are in the area of the Branch Avenue Surratt's Road interchange. And there are two properties which are in the area of the US 301 upgrade. Uh, the property owners have consented to an additional reservation period of one year. Uh, the county council and the county executive have offered uh, support for the continuation of these reservations. And so today, in accordance with Section 24.141 of uh, the subdivision regulations, uh, we would uh, ask you to approve the continuation of these reservations for an additional year. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mesa. Let's see if the board has any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Commissioner um, Washington? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Okay. Is there a motion? Move approval, Madam Chair. Commissioner Washington. Commissioner Geraldo seconds. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay. Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Okay, so we're now going to go to items five, six, and seven, which are companion cases. Item five is the a departure from parking and loading standards 472. Item six is the departure from design standards 656. Item seven is departure from sign design standards 700. It's because they are companion cases, there will be one record encompassing all three cases. So the testimony pertaining to one and the presentations pertaining to one will be in the record for all of them. Okay, so um, let me do a check to make sure we have everyone. Eddie Diaz-Campbell? Present. Um, Sherry Connor? Present. Christopher Hatcher? Um, Tom Masoch? Present. Um, ben Ryan? Present. Stephanie Clevenger? Present. Did I pronounce it correctly? Probably not. It's Clevenger, it's no worries. Clevenger, okay. Jamie Hayes? Present. Uh, uh, Carmen DiDiano? Yes, Madam President. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, that concludes yes, that concludes my speakers list for this case. Um, I don't think I missed anybody. So, Mr. Diaz Campbell, you're on. All right. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. For the record, I am Eddie Diaz Campbell, Senior Planner for the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Items five, six, and seven on the agenda are a set of departures associated with post-site changes for McDonald's 
at 2306 University Boulevard. Item 5, or DPLS-472, is a departure from parking and loading spaces to reduce the number of provided parking spaces on site from 53 to 47. Item 6, or DDS-656, is a departure from design standards to allow the landscape strip along the front of the property to be between zero and about five feet, where a 10-foot wide buffer is normally required. Item 7, or DSDS 700, is a departure from sign design standards to allow relocation of the property's freestanding sign to a location five feet behind the new right-of-way line. These departures are being requested because the State Highway Administration is condemning about 22 feet of the property's depth for purple line construction. The reduced property area necessitates changes to the design of the site along the new property frontage. As a matter of housekeeping, please let me know that all comments and discussion made for the record on any of these three items, including this presentation, should be incorporated to the record for all three items. Staff also notes that a revision of special exception site plan, ROSP-4686-01, has been filed for this project. This ROSP is being processed separately for planning director review and approval. Uh, slide two, please. The site is located in the northwestern part of Prince George's County, within Planning Area 65 and Council District 2. Slide 3, please. More specifically, the site is located on the north side of Maryland 193, approximately half a mile east of its intersection with Riggs Road. Slide 4, please. The subject site is located in the Commercial Shopping Center, or CSC Zone. To the north and east of the site are other commercial uses. To the south is Maryland 193, with additional commercial uses, as well as single-family detached dwellings beyond. To the west is a gas station, and to the northwest is right-of-way for Pepco transmission lines. The transmission lines and single-family detached dwellings are in the one-family detached residential, or R55 zone. The surrounding commercial uses are all in the CSC zone. Slide 5, please. The site map shows that the topography on the site is generally flat. The topography slopes moderately upward west of the property. Slide 6, please. The aerial photograph shows the existing site layout as well as the surrounding uses. Slide 7, please. This bird's eye view shows an up-close view of the existing site layout. A special note are the 12 parking spaces closest to the street and the 10-foot wide landscape buffer between this parking and the street. Both the parking and the front pro landscape buffer are to be re removed and replaced with a new design. The property's freestanding sign is not readily visible in this photo. Slide 8, please. The master plan right-of-way map shows Maryland 193, an arterial roadway, and Riggs Road, a collector roadway. Although right-of-way dedication is not required with this type of application, the State Highway Administration is condemning a strip of land across the front of the property as part of purple line construction activities and so the right way will ultimately be widened. The condemnation area will be shown on a future slide. Slide nine, please. The existing conditions plan shows the McDonald's building in yellow, the property boundaries in red, and the existing right of way in blue. Also shown are the existing parking, drive through, driveways, and other site features. The existing freestanding sign is shown in orange, just to the west of the site entrance. Slide 10, please. The site plan again shows the McDonald's building property boundaries and additionally shows the expanded right way in blue. It shows that the 12 parking spaces across the front of the property are to be replaced with six parallel parking spaces. It also shows the freestanding site in orange, relocated just to the east of the site entrance. These changes are shown in more detail in the future slide. Slide 11, please. The landscape plan shows existing landscape areas on site in light green and proposed ones in bright green. The existing landscape areas were approved with the prior special exception plan for the site, SE-4686. New landscaping will be provided across the front of the site, and changes to the existing landscaping will also be made to accommodate the site's new position. Slide 12, please. This slide shows all the proposed site changes in detail. The number of parking spaces on site will be reduced from 53 to 47 by replacing the 12 parking spaces across the front of the property with six new parallel spaces. Most of these spaces are right up against the new right-of-way line. However, there is some space remaining for the new landscaping shown in green. The relocated sign is shown in orange at the far eastern end of the property, five feet from the new right-of-way line. 
Each of the three departures has different criteria for approval outlined in the zoning ordinance. These criteria are examined in detail in the technical staff report. Based on staff's findings for these criteria, staff is recommending approval of all three departures, subject to conditions. In general, staff found that the applicant's proposed design is appropriate given the constrained amount of space between the existing building and driveway and the new street right-of-way line. In conclusion, the subdivision zoning staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings and approve DPLS 472, DDS 656, and DSDS 700, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Are there questions of Mr. D.S. Campbell? Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Okay. Um, Commissioner Geraldo. No questions. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Mr. Hatcher. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Chris Hatcher with Lurch, Early & Brewer, here on behalf of the applicant, McDonald's Real Estate Company, uh, for applications uh, DPLS 472, DDS 656, and DSDS 700. I'd like to first thank staff, uh, planning staff, and also SHA staff uh, for coordinating on this application. Um, as stated by staff, planning staff, the purpose of this application is to ensure that the, the applicant is not is not penalized for accommodating the right-of-way needs associated with the purple line coming down University Boulevard. Uh, thus, the departures requested are the minimum necessary in order to support the purple line tracks along the frontage uh, while uh, not creating uh, any zoning violations for the property owner. Well, with that, the applicant accepts all proposed uh, conditions in the staff report. We don't have any proposed revisions, uh, and we respectfully request that the planning board um, approved DPLS 7, I mean 472, DDS uh, 656, and DSDS 700. Uh, we have several members of the team with us today to respond to any questions that you might have. So Mr. Hatcher, um, your folks that I've just announced earlier are, are here only if there are questions? Correct. Okay. I know you said questions. I just want to make sure only. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, let's see if um, our folks have any questions for you. Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Uh, Commissioner Geraldo? None, thank you. Com Commissioner Washington? No questions. Okay, so that concludes our sign-up sheet. We have no questions. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, Commissioner Washington uh, would like to move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve DPLS-472, DDS-656, and DSDS-700 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report. Second. We have a motion and a, and a second. A motion um, by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Vice Chair Bailey. Is there discussion? Seeing none, Madam Vice Chair. What I? Uh, Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. I vote aye. Wonderful. Okay, the ayes have it for zero. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So now we will go to item eight, which is a bigger bigger uh, case here. That we, so, um, let me go, let me make sure we do a roll check to make sure we have everyone that we need on this matter. Okay. Um, Jim, Jeremy Hurlbutt. Present, Madam Chair. Ms. Kozak. Present. And Mr. Haller. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm present. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark, Mark Cuba. Mark Juba. Present. Okay, thank you. Crystal Hancock? Present. Ben Ryan? Present. Thank you. Um, John Mack? Hold on a second. Present, Madam. Thank you. Stacy Silver? Present. Okay. Robert Gilbane? Present. Oops, Kate Powers? 
Present. Philip Hughes. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm present. Thank you. Alan Jett. Present. Dr. Sas Bojana. Present, Madam Chair. Uh, Jason, N oh, excuse me, Jason Natepsky. Jason Natepsky. Present. Okay, thank you. Chital Desai. Chatel Desai? Dr. Desai will not be able to. Okay. Today. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that concludes the sign up list for today. Um, I would say that we have some proposed exhibits for this case. So we have the applicant's proposed revised um, conditions, um, which we are, are marking as applicant's exhibit number one for purposes of reference. Um, we have applicants revised architecture and site plan PowerPoint, which we will mark and accept as applicants exhibit number two. And we also have a May 5th letter from the city of Hyattsville, which we will refer to as city exhibit number one. Thank you. Okay, so we're ready to go. Mr. Hulbutt, you're on. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the planning board. For the record, my name is Jeremy Hulbutt with the Urban Design Section. The project before you is detailed site plan DSP 20004, Riverfront at West Highsville Metro, Parcel 1. This is an expedited transportation oriented development project, or ETOD. Um, you have noted uh, the exhibits that were received before 10 a.m. yesterday and entered into the record. The applicant seeks approval of a 44,362 square foot medical office building with a 238-space parking garage and also proposes to amend the land use category to mixed-use residential and add medical laboratory and eating and drinking establishment, establishment as allowed uses on the subject property. Slide two, please. The site is located in the northern portion of Prince George's County in Planning Area 68 and Council District 2. Slide 3, please. More specifically, the site is located on the west side of Vega Road at the intersection with Little Branch Run, about 135 feet north of Jamestown Road and the West Hyattsville Metro Station. Slide 4, please. The subject property is zoned mixed-use transportation oriented or MXT zone. Next slide. The property is located in the West Heightsville Transit District Overlay Zone. Slide six, please. The aerial photo illustrates the property is currently vacant. Multifamily residential uses are to the north beyond little, what will be Little Branch Run. To the west, beyond the metro tracks, is vacant land approved for townhouse development as shown with the lotting pattern. The West Hyattsville Metro Station is to the south, as you can see the bus loop, and to the east is Ager Road and one family detached dwelling units and commercial uses beyond. Slide seven, please. The site is flat and only slopes slightly from east to west and contains no regulated environmental features. Next slide, please. The, the property front on master plan arterial Ager Road. Slide nine, please. The bird's eye view shows the rest of the riverfront development, which is under construction to the, on the west side of the metro shacks. And the metro station is a single commercial property in, to the south, and commercial and residential across Ager Road to the east. Next slide. The illustrative site plan shows the subject application, which is proposing a 44,362 square foot medical office building shown here in dark blue and the 238 space parking garage shown in the lighter blue. Uh, the three story medical office building with accessory ground floor eating and drinking establishment, which will be a coffee shop, drugstore, and 
accessory medical laboratory use will sit near the intersection of Ager and Little Branch Run in the northeast corner of the property. The four-level parking garage will sit on the south side of the office building and will have access from Ager Road and Little Branch Run. The, the parking garage will maintain a common building wall along Ager Road with the office as, with the office building and we'll have an interior drop-off area that is covered uh, that is accessed from the covered uh, covered access point to the medical office building loading trash and transformers will be located on the west side of the building between it and the metro tracks slide 11 this show slide shows the site plan has submitted. Slide 12. The landscape plan shows the landscape around the proposed build building in the garage. The proposed development is within the West Heightsville TDP and is subject to the standards of the TDOZ as contained under the landscape section. The applicant has requested an amendment from the standards to provide planner boxes in front of the building, which staff supports. Those landscaping requirements not covered by the TDP standards are governed by the landscape manual, which staff has reviewed and submitted plans and has re reviewed the submitted plans and finds conformance. Next slide. Slide 13 shows the TDP's original preferred land use plan. In at previous approval, DSP 16029, the subject property was approved for an amendment to the preferred land use category, which originally was townhouse, to multi, the multifamily category. Next slide, please. The applicant proposes to change the land use category to mixed use residential, which staff supports. Slide 15. At the top, it, this slide shows the west and east elevations. The top shows the west elevation or the metro f track facing elevation. The bottom elevation shows the east or Eager Road elevation. The building will be composed mostly of metal and glass panels with masonry and other materials providing accents. The base of the building will be clad in copper colored metal with gray metal rain screen panels above. The main building entrance will face the parking garage and vehicular drop-off, but will also have access from the sidewalk along Hager Road. The entrance and an internal stairwell will be surrounded on two sides with floor-to-roof glass, making it stand out. A large canopy will connect the parking garage to the medical office building, and the facade of the medical office building will have limited fenestration which will include two square windows on the east elevation or Eager side elevation. Next slide. This slide shows the north and south elevations. The top elevation is the south elevation that will front or that will front the metro station to the south. And the, the bottom elevation shows the elevation that will front Little Branch Run. The two horizontal bands of Windows will wrap around the corner of the building at Eager Road and Little Branch. The, the garage architecture continues a similar pattern of copper colored metal panels on the lowest level and perforated gray metal screens above the, up, on the, <coughs> above on the upper levels. Staff has requested that the garage elevation provide more architectural interest as there is a large facade on the south side that may be visible until the metro property redevelops. The applicant is proposing changes to the architecture that staff supports. Next slide. This slide shows a proposed LED lit super graphic and sign that will be added to the Ager facade on the right hand side of the screen. With that, Urban Design staff recommends planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve detailed site plan DSP 
2004 and the subject contain conditions and amendments contained within the staff report. The applicant has submitted modified conditions that staff is in agreement with and includes the conditions proposed by the city of Hyattsville. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Okay, let's see if there's questions for Mr. Hurlbut. Um, uh, let me just make this statement first. Uh, Mr. Hurlbut, going through this, um, it, it's a comprehensive technical staff report. Um, um, and I appreciate your analysis of the um, proposed changes to the standards. There are several of them, and, and, and your analysis um, w was very thorough and really does a nice job. I mean, I know some of it's in the statements of justification and whatnot, but of really explaining why these standards need to be changed in this position, in, in this instance. And uh, so I just, I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, thank you, Madam thank Chair. You. Okay, Mr. Howard. Well, let me see if there are any questions. Madam Vice Chair? She's muted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll come back to her. Uh, Commissioner Washington, do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. Commissioner Geraldo? That's yeah. yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, Madam Vice Chair, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Uh, the mayor of, of Hyattsville uh, mentioned the cafe and permit, permitting the cafe. I'm wondering if it's the cafe something designed for the uh, individuals there? Or to, for the medical laboratory, or it's open to the gen is it something that would be open to the general public? Yeah, it's it does say uh, it's it's I th well you can answer that, but I know it's 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 primarily I think for the employees, but I think other people can attend that. Um, Mr. Carlbach, can you address that, or Mr. Haller? Yep, the, the 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 cafe is located internally to the building and does not have direct access um, okay. from the frontage, but is open to the general public. As the applicant indicated to us. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? No questions, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Haller? Good morning, Madam Chair. It's good to see everybody's <laughs> smiling face this morning. Okay. Wait a minute. Mine's here, too. Okay. <laughs> good morning. And uh, thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to present this exciting proposal to you today. Um, uh, again, for the record, Thomas Haller, I'm an attorney with offices in Largo, and I'm here today uh, representing the property owner, who is West Hyattsville Property Company, as well as the applicant, who is Kaiser Permanente. And uh, I'm, in, my, in my presentation, I'm going to bring you up to date as regards to the status of the overall riverfront at West Hyattsville project. Uh, we're going to uh, ask some representatives of Kaiser Permanente to provide some information to you about their vision for the new facility. And uh, then I'm going to address uh, the issues related to modifications to the architecture related to the garage uh, that staff had requested and that are included in uh, Applicants Exhibit 2, which is our PowerPoint presentation. Um, so going to, if I could ask staff to go to slide three, the site vicinity map. There we go. Um, this site vicinity map um, shows the subject property. And if you will recall, uh, this project, which is known as the riverfront at West Hyattsville, uh, is an 18 and a half acre property. It was formerly uh, a warehouse, the Ginn's warehouse, and you can see the old warehouse building that is kind of superimposed on the back side of the property on the west of the subject uh, of the property that's the subject of today's hearing. And uh, when we came in uh, back in uh, 2017, we filed a preliminary plan of subdivision and a detailed site plan for infrastructure uh, in, in, in which we proposed to develop 183 townhouses and then we had three other parcels that were uh, set aside for future development. And another thing you may recall about this project is that even though it was a fully developed industrial site, it was largely located in the 100-year floodplain, which is not unusual for a lot of properties around metro stations. And as part of our overall development of the site, uh, you also approved a mandatory referral allowing us to 
provide compensatory storage on an adjoining parcel of land that's owned by the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. And since we obtained approval of those plans, we have been actively installing the infrastructure for this site. So the floodplain work, the filling of the floodplain and the creation of the compensatory storage area is now complete. There was a trail that was located in the adjacent park and planning land, which we have now reconstructed, and that is complete. We were also required to provide lighting along the trail that's on park and planning property. And the lights are now installed or in the process of being connected to the PEPCO system. And then there was a passive park with a promenade located to the west of the property. And that project is about 95 percent complete. And the anticipation is that the promenade and the landscaping should be completed by the end of this year. So we've made a tremendous amount of progress to date, although we have not yet constructed any buildings on the property. The residential component, the townhouses, architecture for the townhouses was approved originally in 2018. And we're pleased to announce that we have identified a builder for those townhouses, Stanley Martin Homes. And we anticipate that they will begin construction soon and hopefully begin to start delivering townhouses maybe in the third quarter of this year. So the remainder of the project consists of three parcels of land, parcels one, two, and three. Parcels two and three are located on the west side of the metro tracks. And we have held out the development of those sites because there is an adjacent parcel of land that's owned by WMATA that is only accessible from the road that accesses our development, Little Branch Run. And the owners of the riverfront at West Hyattsville property have been working with WMATA. And that property is now under contract. And we anticipate that a development application will be submitted in the near future for development on the west side of the tracks. Parcel one, which is the subject of this hearing, and which is outlined in red on the site vicinity map, is a parcel that we had initially flagged as a potential residential or mixed use building. But we always felt that there was a higher and better use for the property than just as a residential development. And we believe that that higher and better use is the kind of permanent day proposal that we have before you today. Because it's an opportunity to introduce a commercial use in close proximity to the metro with great visibility from Agar Road and proximity to the metro line. As you are probably aware, Kaiser Permanente has a very extensive presence in Prince George's County and the Washington metropolitan area. In fact, they also already have a facility in Hyattsville. But that site is a leased site. This gives them an opportunity to own a medical office building near the metro station, and it will be a state-of-the-art medical office building. It will consist of administrative offices, examination rooms, the medical laboratories we discussed, a pharmacy. And although the pharmacy will be only available for members for prescriptions, they will be able to be over-the-counter drugs that the general public could purchase. And then the cafe is going to be open to the public. And in fact, our proposal is to put outdoor seating outside to make sure that the general public is well aware of the fact that it is open to the public. In fact, Kaiser Permanente has a lot of programmatic operations in mind to make sure that the street frontage is activated. They have regular health fairs, and they also conduct farmer's markets to encourage healthy eating during the summer. And we have space allocated in the front of the building to be able to accommodate not only the outdoor seating, but also the opportunity for farmer's markets and health fairs. So there is an extensive effort being made to integrate this not only into the streetscape, but into the public. Another thing I would like to point out is that along the front of the building, there are conference rooms provided right at the northeast corner of the building. Those conference rooms will also be available to the public to be able to schedule meetings and activities in as well. The use of those rooms will just have to be coordinated with the building management. So as I say, there is a big 
attempt in this particular instance to integrate the building into into the community. Um, we have several representatives of Kaiser who are participating in the hearing, and a couple of them would like to provide a, a, a briefing to the planning board about the plans for the site and how it fits into their overall goals in the county. So um, I think the first present presenter is going to be Mr. Alan Jett, and I'm going to open the uh, uh, floor to him uh, to allow him to address the board. Mr. Jett is the vice president for the D.C. and suburban areas of the department. Hi, good morning. So uh, I am the uh, vice president of operations for Kaiser okay. Permanente. And we're pretty proud of our 40-year history in Maryland and in Prince George's County. We opened our first building in Landover in 1980, and we've grown to support four clinical buildings in, in Prince George's County, as well as one administrative building, serving about 178,000 members, which is about 15% of all of the residents in Prince George's County, and we encourage them to live well and thrive. This particular project will infuse about $51 million into the local economy. We'll provide primary care services as, as well as lab, radiology, and pharmacy, pharmacy support and also potential uh, community conference space within a new modernized healthcare facility that's very close to public transportation. We're really looking forward to opening up in 2022 so we can continue to provide superior health care to the residents in Prince George's County. And I just want to thank you for, uh, very much for your time and for your consideration to this project. Thank you, Mr. Jett. Let's see if there's any questions for you. Um, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Um, Commissioner Washington? Uh, no questions. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? I, I don't have any questions. I just wanted to thank Kaiser Permanente for continuing to be best in the community. Okay, thank you. And then uh, I know we have been joined by Commissioner Dorner. Hello. No questions. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so with that, we're going to... Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Haller, do you, who do you want to go next? Uh, yes, I think also from Kaiser Permanente, we have Dr. Sauce Bajana, and I think he would like to make a few work, uh, comments as well. Thank you. And please introduce yourself again, uh, Dr. Bajana. Okay. Yes, Madam Chair. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Bajana, and I'm uh, one of the uh, physicians, clinical leadership with Kaiser Permanente as an assistant physician in chief uh, for capital planning and innovation. So thank you for allowing me to speak here, Madam Chair and members of the board. I appreciate your time. I will be brief. Uh, I want to uh, reiterate what uh, Alan Jett has said and uh, to just highlight a little bit about what Kaiser Permanente brings to the table to Maryland in particular, and especially to Prince George's County. I uh, just want to mention th three things. Uh, I'd like to mention how we rate in terms of our insurance plans by uh, the National uh, For-Profit Agency, the National Committee for Quality Assurance, tell you a little bit about our quality of care and how we continue and will continue to bring that to Prince George's County, and just a tiny bit about what we've done for COVID-19. This will be very brief. Uh, just to let you know, we've been awarded five-star ratings for our insurance plans, our commercial plan, marketplace plans, as well as for our Medicare Advantage plans, and this is really advantageous for members of the community, especially with Medicare Advantage five-star rating, which means that members can join our plan any time of year, not just during open enrollment. In terms of clinical care, again, as rated by the National Committee for Quality Assurance, we rank number one out of 14 measures nationwide. This includes care for hypertension, diabetes, cervical cancer screening, adolescent vaccines. We've also achieved low mortality, lower mortality rates for uh, patients with diabetes, uh, higher survival rates for breast cancer, uh, compared to the national average and a remarkable decrease, 54% reduction in prescription opioid use. So this is part of what the clinical care, uh, where we excel and how we uh, plan to continue to bring this to Prince George's County. And I'll, I'll touch on COVID-19 briefly because that's on everybody's mind. We have been able to ramp up our remote care quite remarkably when called upon during these difficult times. 90% of our care is now done uh, remotely. Uh, the majority of that is now going to video we were able to set up early drive up testing locations. We've also been able to quickly ramp up remote care for patients who've had COVID-19 and discharge from the hospital so they stay connected to us. And we've also been able to have town halls with clients just to let folks know what we're doing and where we stand. So this is just a smattering of the quality of care that we plan to bring and continue to bring to Prince George's County. And we are very honored and excited about this project. Uh, and I'm honored uh, to be given some time to present this to you. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bojana. Um, you know, I'm sure several of us have comments, and uh, we'll probably reserve them until when, when your last speakers have finished, Mr. Harrow, Mr. Haller. Okay. Um, okay. So, Mr. Haller, who do you want to go next? Oh, well, let me I'll see block. if there's any questions for you, Dr. Bojana. Uh, Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Commissioner Washington. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Dorner. No questions, just a comment of, uh, I'm glad to see that, that Kaiser is coming into the, the county in a couple of different places, uh, but particularly here um, in, in the West Hyattsville area. I think that's, it's a very needed kind of um, area, and this is going to be great with a couple of the other developments um, that are coming in the area that Mr. Haller is also well aware of. Okay. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Haller, who do you want to go next? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the next person that is going to speak is John Mack, who's with Canon Design. But before I turn it over to Mr. Mack, um, I want to just uh, comment briefly on uh, the modifications that are being proposed that are addressed in our PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, as you noted, the site and the architecture have been evaluated con for conformance with the West Hyattsville Transit District Development Plan. Uh, which was adopted in 2006 and I agree um, Mr. Hurlbut has been great to work with and he did a masterful job in a, going through all of the modifications. Uh, this is one of the older TDDPs and it has a few outdated requirements like requiring incandescent lighting and things like that and so there were some modifications that were needed um, but uh, the one, one of the issues uh, that the TDDP addresses and which is really the subject of the modifications that we have proposed here before you today relate to parking. So the TDDP, uh, as is not unusual for um, transit-oriented areas, provides no minimum number of parking require, uh, spaces required, but it does establish a maximum. Um, and in this particular area, the maximum number of parking spaces uh, that is permitted for any type of commercial use, regardless of the type, is two parking spaces per thousand. Uh, this is a medical office building, which does put it into a little bit of a different category because some of the patients that come to us either have mobility issues or they may be sick and not want to be in, on public transport, as we know in today's world. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as the application was filed, uh, Kaiser Permanente, based upon its experience in other locations in Prince George's County, was proposing more parking similar to what you would see in a typical medical office building in Prince George's County and typical to what their past experiences have been. So if, if you look at the Prince George's County zoning ordinance, you will see that for a medical office building, five parking spaces per thousand is what is the minimum required. And so that was really where we started out. And we provided information to staff to show them based on our experience uh, that that was the range of parking that we needed in order to make sure that not only our existing membership but our future membership would be able to be accommodated in the parking garage uh, in a safe manner. Um, but um, as you all are aware, uh, COVID-19 happened. Yeah. And what COVID-19 has shown is that telemedicine and uh, remote uh, diagnostics is going to become a thing of the future. And so uh, as we worked through the detailed site plan with staff, uh, there were a couple of issues that were raised. Number one is that the vision of the TDDP is to provide the minimum parking required to serve the uses. Uh, the second issue that we worked with staff was to make sure that the parking garage did not occupy too much mass along the streetscape. And you will see condition 1H, staff had recommended that we provide some additional treatment to the garage in order to minimize the appearance of the mass and also to um, to make sure that it is architecturally attractive. And so as we were uh, working on those items, what Kaiser Permanente realized was that given the change in health patterns, which they believe will be permanent, that they are in a position where they can actually reduce the number of parking spaces um, and they will do that by reducing the height of the parking garage. So the site plan, the, the medical office building footprint does not change, the parking garage footprint does not change, but the height of the parking garage and therefore the number of parking spaces would change. 
So the image that you see in front of you is the rendered um, site plan um, that uh, shows both of those um, uh, structures. And what I'd like to do now is to turn it over to um, John Mack, who's with the architect Canon Design, and have him review what m making these modifications does to the architecture. Um, and as uh, Mr. Hurlbut indicated, we shared this information with him. We've also shared it with the city of Hyattsville. And I think everybody is supportive of the modifications that result. But let me have okay. Mr. Mack so run through the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so so Mr. Hallow, you want to stay right here on this slide for the time being? Well, just until Mr. Mack starts, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Mr. Mack. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the court. Good morning. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, my name is John Mack with Canon Design. I'm Senior Vice President and part of the architect of record for this project. Uh, we appreciate your time this morning and able to present some modified approaches uh, that we've taken, uh, not only the operational impacts as Mr. Haller just reviewed for Kaiser Permanente, but also in working with staff to uh, address some initial concerns going forward, uh, resulting in these uh, updated drawings that you see in front of you. Quite, quite frankly, uh, the configuration and shape of the parking garage uh, as the southern component of this complex is dictated by uh, the site plan and existing uh, easements that run along the south side and entry configuration as well as the tracks on the west side uh, of the existing uh, metro lines uh, in terms of that. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, you can begin to see uh, the proposed reduction in the parking garage uh, in relation to the medical office building. Uh, this is a view looking uh, northwesterly from Agar Road. Uh, we have reduced the overall size, one thing, as well as proposed uh, a number of alternatives in terms of the screening of the parking garage. It is being proposed with a material that is a flex mesh uh, that allows a high level of transparency into the parking garage, but also provides some level of detail and interest uh, to, the, uh, to the garage itself as a screening material. We're able to also uh, enclose our stair tower and elevator bank so that we now have bookends, if you would, of our exterior lantern conditions. The glass entry conditions are a very strong feature of the medical office building and the garage. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, we've looked at providing much more transparency, uh, both to the medical office building along the first floor, as well as into the parking garage, where we've opened up a great deal more uh, space, visibility into the parking garage. Uh, from a security as well as lighting perspective. If you can go on to the next slide, please. This is a perspective of the proposed office building looking from Little Branch Road south along Agar Road. So you have the alternate uh, presentation of that and you start to see the massing of the medical office building uh, as well as the parking structure beyond. Uh, you see the, the visibility uh, in the foreground is located what is going to be uh, the, the conference rooms that are available uh, to the public as well as internalized functions that they have in operation. Uh, again, we have maintained uh, the, the grounded plane of the what is referred to as the terracotta phenolic board, residence board material that we have. Uh, the upper portion of the building is clad in a perforated metal uh, exterior skin that provides uh, interest in a contemporary presentation along with ribbon windows and of course the uh, one of the strong artistic uh, embellishments is referred to as a super graphic and this is a uh, a well-defined uh, series of patterns and interest uh, that is provided very subtly in terms of backlit conditions if you could go on to the uh, next slide please and you start to see this being expressed in the nighttime. One of the concerns that we've addressed, uh, we believe successfully, is to make sure that the super graphic, even though it's internally illuminated, uh, does not provide uh, 
overflow lighting beyond the curb line. It's taken into account in terms of photometrics that are uh, put there. We believe it's there and provides the visual interest. Uh, it's anchored by uh, a monumental stair at our main entrance. It's referred to as the Thrive Stair. We encourage that activity uh, that provides that direct connection to uh, Aga Road and the very integrated thing, uh, very integrated pedestrian experience. Uh, adjacent to that is the glass enclosed stair tower of the parking garage as well, as you can begin to see and sense the transparency of the screening material in the evening of the parking garage as well. Uh, we think this reduced massing uh, provides a nice step up from the south uh, to the north uh, in terms of the overall uh, function of the site. Uh, and we hope you, you envision it as well. Next slide, please. This gives you an opposite feeling from a pedestrian connection from the metro, uh, excuse me, metro station to the south as you were to uh, uh, approach this facility along Eager Road. This is looking north along Eager Road, uh, and this is a sense of what you have. Uh, next slide, please. Again, straightforward elevations. You see the stepping down uh, effect that we have on the east elevation. Uh, this is Agar Road during the daytime. Uh, landscape is involved uh, very heavily. Uh, proposed landscape area to soften uh, the presentation. Uh, the north elevation, which is below, this is looking from, if you would, from Little Branch Run uh, into the facility. Uh, the parking garage is at the rear, rear of that. Again, landscaping is is provide uh, and integrated as part of the screening activity in terms of this as well. Medical office buildings in the forefront that you see uh, located at that, lecture, at that location as well. Uh, next slide, please. The south elevation is the parking garage uh, as seen from the metro lot to our south. Uh, you see it's it's anchorage to the medical office buildings on the right portion of the page. Uh, we have uh, suggested a, a integrated pattern that's very reflective of our super graphic on this material that wraps and skins, if you would, the parking garage. It provides some interest. And the idea that we are presenting in front of you is that patterning kind of diminishes as it runs to the west or to the left of this elevation on top on the south elevation. Uh, again, not to detract, but to enhance the uh, the detail that's presented uh, along Anger Road, the main entry of the garage. Uh, the west elevation below is what you see basically from the the tracks, if you would, and the future development across the, uh, across the tracks. Uh, it is comprised of again uh, the simple mesh mesh panels that anchor the garage on this facade, along with the landscape screen that, that brackets the entry drive off the Little Branch Run into the back of the facility. Next, next slide, please. We just thought we'd present the overall facility without the landscape to give you an idea of the granite architecture that you will see uh, in reality there. It is anchored by the welcome sign uh, that provides the pedestrian connection as well as uh, the transparency that we're working hard to ensure uh, that this building uh, allows interactive pedestrian views off of Edgar Road uh, and that engages not only uh, the members that, that will use this facility, but also the public that passes by uh, and provides the connectivity we believe is a strong aspect of this site. With that, I will turn it back over to Mr. Howard, but thank you. Madam Chair and okay. members of the... Can I, allow me to see if there's any questions for you first before you turn it back, okay? Um, it looks beautiful. Um, Madam Vice Chair, any questions no for question. Mr. Mack? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Uh, Commissioner Washington? No questions, uh, but I join you in uh, congratulating them on this design um, and also thank Kaiser. Uh, for their continued commitment to the county. It's just very well done. And I especially like the uh, the night illumination features. So thank you. Very nice. Okay. Commissioner Dorner. 
Yeah, I just have um, a question about the one aspect of the garage in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I would reiterate that we don't always have good screening in, in some of the parking garages around the county, um, and, and we've continually asked applicants to try and think about that as they come up. Um, and this is, I think this is a great job. I think this, this definitely does what we ask people to, to do, and, and it looks really good. Um, so I'm, I'm real familiar with this area. I sometimes come in on the metro um, from D.C. At, at West Heights. It's really dark over in that area. So I just wanted to know about um, the light. And this is going to be a great feature for um, for the new development coming in there and to kind of help um, that, that local kind of vicinity. Um, so I wanted to know if, about sort of the, the lighting that you guys are going to have around this building to um, promote kind of safety of, of pedestrian traffic at night. Um, and then also one thing that, that I was thinking about with, with the bikes, I know you guys have um, a couple bike stations and a capital bike share that's going to be going in there, but do you have any, any bike parking that would be um, available in the actual garage itself? Because one of the things that, that's sort of a pet peeve of mine in Hyattsville has a, a, a theme of everything's within a walking distance, um, but if you're if you're walking and you're biking and it's raining or you come out and it's raining, one of the worst things that have happened is is that you you come out and your bike is just soaked um, and you don't have time to get on any kind of um, jacket or anything like that. So, would you be able to put a, an area in the garage that would have bike parking so that way there would be um, sort of a, a roof on top of um, the bikes? Uh, Mr. Dorner, this is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, we do have that plan. It's part of the entry uh, connection uh, that we have. Uh, Jason, basically right behind the uh, the lower level wall, if you would, is a, a series of bike parking adjacent to the main elevators and the, and the Thrive Stair. It provides uh, a large plaza area that provides a direct connection into our medical office building. It's also a drop-off area for the members to use as well. Uh, so we do have bike parking located within that that sheltered area. Okay, great. And then, what kind of lighting do you are you going to have around this building, um, particularly in, in sections of it that may not be as as visible from like kind of the main street fronts? Uh, we we have, if you go back to our, our night vision, uh, you will see some low level pedestrian lighting that we have to make sure we have uh, illustrations for. You can see in the foreground to provide lighting along the pedestrian way. Um, it is proposed on the, uh, the sides of the south side of the building, some directional lighting that provides adequate uh, uh, visibility and light levels uh, for an egress path out of the garage that connects back to the public way. Uh, in terms of that, we've looked and uh, will continue to develop further uh, to make sure our lighting does not provide uh, spillover nor uh, or light uh, light glaze, if you would, indirect light glaze uh, to the atmosphere. Uh, but we're very sensitive to that. Uh, what we're suggesting here, as you can see, is certainly a majority of the, the intensity of light is contained within the interior functions of the building. Uh, we're, we're not looking for uh, an illumination beyond highlighting our welcome signs and obviously there will be the addition of, a, of, of street park or excuse me street lighting uh, that's provided by the city of Hyattsville on the frontage as well uh, but the overall illumination level and a safety level and a security level that we're very cognizant of but also uh, controllability in terms of spillage if you would to the adjacent property okay thank you and I, I would also note let me just jump in that um, Prince George's County is in the process of uh, working on the uh, reconstruction of Agar Road, which will include street lighting as well. The image that you see doesn't really show that, but the likelihood is that the lighting at the street level will be brighter than the lighting that's emanating from the building, and so uh, Agar Road will be well lit as well. Okay. Um, are there other questions, Commissioner Dorner? No, I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Haller, what's next? Uh, but that's the uh, end of our presentation. I do have, as you noted, um, applicants exhibit one, which is proposed revisions to conditions 
uh, mm -hmm. which we had provided into the record. And I would like to, um, I don't need to go through every one of them, but I would like to highlight a couple of the modifications. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, okay. Of course, I'm happy to go through each one of them, but I think uh, for purposes of brevity, I can just highlight a couple of them. Uh, w the first one I wanted to highlight is, um, con it's under section C, condition 1D, which uh, says revise the plans to show a location for a 19 stock 10 bike capital bike share station along Ager Road, which we are proposing to remove. The reason that we are removing that is because we have located that bike share on the north side of Little Branch Run along Ager Road. So it's not actually on this property, it's across uh, Little Branch Run. And uh, that is on the certified plan for uh, for the Riverfront at West Hyattsville project. So rather than having it in, on the frontage of this property, we're having it in the, uh, on the frontage of that property. So the Green Street, I'm okay. sorry, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. When you finish with that condition, I want to go back to Mr. Hobart for a second. Okay. okay. Um, the uh, county's Green Street proposed plan improvements have a bus stop directly in front of this property uh, um, right at the corner. So the bike share has been moved to the north side of the road. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say I'm glad you explained that you're not just removing it and there's an explanation for it because uh, um, I knew otherwise we weren't going to go for that. And particularly, you, you, you know, this plan is coming before us during National Bike Month, you know, on the very day that the first bike was introduced to the United States. So I just, that would not be a good plan. But I see that you, um, you do have, uh, it, it is shown elsewhere. So, um, Mr. Hurlbut, you did say you're okay with the revised conditions and you're okay with that one in particular as well? Yes, in, in this okay. particular condition, there was an application that was in process that has now uh, been certified that shows the relocation of the bike share station. So we put the condition there in abundance of caution. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and, and Madam Chair, I would uh, note, and I would be remiss if I didn't, I mean, as you recall from the earlier applications, yes. there's been a strong commitment to providing bicycle facilities yes. in this development from the reconstruction of the bike paths to the lighting of the bike paths. And then as the project develops uh, connections from uh, the Extreme Valley Trail up into the development to the Metro station, um, as well as um, all of the improvements uh, around the property. And then yeah. as part of the Green Street's proposal, there will be a bike lane along Eager Road as well. So there will be a strong bicycle connection because I think the board is aware, I think that West Heightsville Metro has the highest percentage of bicycle use of right. any station in the WMATA system. So it, there's a strong commitment to bicycle connectivity with this project. And we're glad because it, it is important and particularly there and that it's consistent with the, with the zone um, and the ETOD. So uh, um, we're, we're, we're glad about that, which, which um, again brings me to the uh, parking because uh, that parking would never have been sufficient. As I poured through this, uh, I, again, I just have to say I'm so impressed with Mr. Hobart's uh, um, analysis of each of those modifications because, you know, you see that many proposed modifications and initially your antenna goes up or your eyebrows raise and you're wondering, okay, why is anybody, but each one of them makes sense and it's a, and it's a good fit for this particular use in this particular environment and, and Having gone through Mr. Hobart's um, analysis of each one, it's, it, it was it was just perfect, and you know I'm, I I can only speak for myself. I was put at ease for that. Um, it's it's a good good um, product, so thank you for that. Um, so you want to finish going through your conditions? Sure. So uh, we removed condition one D, and the substitute one D uh, is to incorporate a condition that was uh, recommended by the city of Hyattsville. Uh, as they do with many of the projects, they asked us to incorporate some sort of an art, a public art element, uh, either a mural, a sculpture, or a functional art piece. And so we've agreed to incorporate that into the plan. And so we will be working uh, with the City of Hyattsville and with staff to identify what that art element will be and where it will be located within the project. Um, condition uh, 1H is the condition that staff originally wrote asking us to put more attention into the architecture of the garage in order to break up the mass and to provide more visual interest. Um, when they wrote that condition, they weren't thinking that we were going to reduce the height of the garage 
to help break up the mass. And so we've revised the condition to allow us to implement the architectural changes that we've shown you this morning. Um, and then the remaining conditions, conditions 1K, uh, L and M, uh, 1K and 1M are conditions, excuse me, 1K is a condition requested by the city of Hyattsville asking that the welcome sign be externally illuminated along the frontage, uh, which I think you saw in the architectural yes. uh, streetscape renderings. And the um, one L is just to uh, a condition to require us to modify the number of parking spaces provided based upon the reduced size of the garage. And then one M um, uh, relates to some minor modifications to the site plan uh, that uh, we, we proposed and we wanted to make sure we had a condition that allowed us to implement them. For example, there's a small outdoor seating area for employees behind the building, which we wanted to add to the site plan. Um, and there are a couple of other details uh, related to the addition of a sidewalk coming out of the garage along the southern um, um, property line uh, and extending to the north in order to provide adequate access for uh, emergencies. So we wanted to make sure that a condition was added that allowed us to in incorporate those small modifications into the site plan. And that would uh, that would conclude my presentation. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. I, I think we um, had asked everyone if they had any questions of you at this uh, point earlier. Um, I don't know if they have any based on the conditions. Um, Chair, can I ask just one question? Sure. Um, so Mr. Heller, in, in sort of the, the interest of making things more accessible for bike and pedestrian, what kind of crosswalk improvements are you doing across Agar Road, like right where Little Branch is, um, or, or the, even the garage entrance? It's a little bit hairy kind of getting across right now, and I know the sidewalks on the other side are not great, but that leads up to like here at Park, and then it could go down into like downtown Heights, so kind of area, kind of area. Um, do you have a way of people getting across the street right there, like safely, either like marking it or, or anything else? Are you referring to Little Branch Run or to um, Agar Road? Yeah, you just go across, like if you were to take Little Branch Run and just go um, across Agar Road right there, do you have like a crosswalk right there that would um, allow people to, to get across either on bike or pedestrian? We, we are not proposing anything as part of this application uh, the county as i noted before is in the process of implementing their uh, 12 million dollar green street upgrade of agar road from queens chapel road down to um east uh, to, i think it's route 400 and so um they, they are making all of the pedestrian and crosswalk improvements sidewalk upgrades lighting bike lanes and medians along agar road so um, we do not have anything particularly proposed here because those improvements are included in their um, in their plans. Okay. At some point, if you have if you're able to give input, it might be good for this project and, and your other project right next to it to try and get something just across Agar, because then then the people who are going to be living in the homes next to there can get over to here at Park, and the folks can kind of get across the street right there. Because otherwise, you have to go kind of south or, or quite a bit north for safe uh -huh. roads. And I'm pretty sure I looked at the plans last night. I'm pretty sure there's a crosswalk there because across the street from this is Lancer Drive. Um, yeah. and so this will be a four way stop. And I'm pretty sure that there's a crosswalk at that location on the county's plans. But I will double check that. OK, great. Thank you. OK, um, thank you. Uh, so, OK, Mr. Haller, I'm going to turn to um, before I turn to Kate Powers representing the city of Hyattsville. I see that we also have Mr. Gilbain signed up. Is, he's not with you, or does he wish to speak? He, he is with me. He almost always wishes to speak, so he might have something to add. Okay, so I'll call on him after the city of Hyattsville. And then Ms. Silber. Ms. Silber, do you wish to speak? No, I'm here on behalf of Kaiser and um, okay. supporters of. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, Kate Powers. Good afternoon, Chairman Hewlett and members of the planning board. Uh, for the record, my name is Kate Powers. I am the city planner for the city of Hyattsville. Uh, and I'm here representing the city of Hyattsville regarding detailed site plan 20004. So on Monday, May 4th of 2020, the Hyattsville City Council voted in support of the applicant's proposed DSP application 
subject to three conditions, uh, some of which Mr. Haller had previously mentioned. The first being that the first floor surface view into the building meet the required 20 feet, specifically for the frontage along Ager Road. Uh, the second being that the welcome sign along Ager Road be illuminated externally. And then third, that a, a public art element in addition to the LED element uh, be integrated into the project. And so the applicant has been very responsive to the city's requests and to our knowledge has integrated all of the city's conditions into their proposed revisions. So overall, the city is in support of the project. And uh, I thank the planning board in advance for its consideration of our comments. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ms. Powers. Yes, the, we have the letter dated May 5th, 2020 in, uh, in the record. It is called the City of Hyattsville Exhibit, City Exhibit Number 1. Um, and those conditions have, in fact, been incorporated. And, and additionally, it says you support all the amendments to, uh, um, and, that, and ask that the District Council approve those amendments. Um, um, so thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so let's see if um, anyone else. I don't know if the board has any questions for Ms. Powers. Um, I don't see anybody lighting up here. Okay. So let me see. So Mr. Gilbain, do you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have no further comments at this time. Just would like to thank uh, staff for their attention to this matter. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Haller, do you, I, I, did I call on, oh, Mr. Rogers, did you want to, I mean, excuse me, Mr. Hughes, did you want to speak? Uh, no, Madam Chair, okay. thank you very much. So, was there anyone on this list who wished to speak whose name I did not call again after initially calling you? Okay, Mr. Haller, you get um, summation if you have any more to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. The only thing I wanted to add is to express my thanks again to staff because um, this is a project that has been impacted uh, in very real ways by the current crisis. Um, and it ended up translating into a modification to the architecture, which we actually think improves the look okay. of the building. And we appreciate staff's uh, flexibility and allowing us to be able to to make this um, make this modification to the plans, and uh, we're really excited about bringing a project of this quality uh, to the West Hyattsville Metro Station, which um, has not had much development around it over the years since the metro was constructed. So, thank you very much for your uh, your comments, and uh, we appreciate the board's support. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Haller. Uh, um, let's see if there's a motion. Madam Chair, uh, this is Commissioner Washington, um, and I would like to move that we adopt the findings of staff and recommend approval to the, dis to the District Council of the property owner's request to permit a medical laboratory and eating and drinking establishment uses on the site and uh, as further modified by applicant exhibit number one. In addition to recommending to uh, District Council uh, the following amendments identified as items uh, B1 through 16 in staff's report, um, amendments to the 2006 approved transit district development plan and transit district overlay zoning map amendment uh, also be approved and they shall also be B1 through 16 as further modified by applicant exhibit number one. And finally, approve DSP-20004 and TCP2-001-2017 01, along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and is further modified by applicant exhibit number one. This is Commissioner Newalva. I second that motion. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, a second by Commissioner Geraldo. Is, uh, is there discussion? Um, under discussion, I would just say uh, kudos to Kaiser Permanente for coming in with a facility that, it, it, and a development in West Hyattsville that's so important and so needed to spur additional development there, but also a, a medical facility that is much needed um, now more than ever. And for adjusting your, 
your uh, building and making the modifications that um, you that became all the more um, paramount after observing the changes during this COVID pandemic. I would also say uh, um, thank you also for the uh, for the bikes, for the uh, understanding for the parking, and also the curb cuts for the planters and and the window boxes with the flowering pants. I think that's just going to make it all the more beautiful as well. But um, it's a it's a beautiful rendering that we saw both the daytime and nighttime illustration, and I did want to take a moment to say thank you. And I was floored by the fact that folks can just join at any time, not just during open season. So um, mm -hmm. I just wa I just wanted to commend the team for a very good pro project, and also to commend Jeremy Hurlbut again for I mean such a detailed analysis. It took a while to go through everything, but it but it was thorough and and um, just very well done. Thank you, Jeremy. Is there additional discussion? Okay, that's called um, Madam Vice Chair. But I. Commissioner Washington. I. Commissioner Geraldo. I chair in your comments, Madam Chair. I. Commissioner Dorner. You know, definitely I. Okay, thank you. So the ayes have it five zero. And um, before I close out, I just wanted to say something, a couple of things. First of all, it is May 21st, and we are about to end this planning board meeting, and it's only a little afternoon. And I wanted to comment that um, given this COVID crisis, I think it's important that we acknowledge on this day in 1881, pioneering nurse and humanitarian Clara Barton founded the Red Cross. And I thought that was an important thing to mention. And then finally, um, on this day in 2017, something that was near and dear to my heart, after nearly a century and a half, 146 years of amazing big top entertainment, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus held their last circus event for ladies, gentlemen, and children of all ages. Um, it is Eat More Fruits and Veggies Day, and I think that's imperative as we try to build up our immune system. Um, and it's, it's so important more now than ever. So again, I thank everyone for your, um, for your engagement, for your commitment, for your flexibility, for working through us during this pandemic and adjusting to the changes. And I thank, and I ask everyone to remain safe, to stay strong, look out for each other and remain ever hopeful. And I will say, Mr. Haller, it was actually really good to see you. To my colleagues, I miss you so much. We're such good sports. Thank you so much. Mr. Hunt, is there any additional business to come before the planning board today? Madam Chair, that's all before the board today. Thank you. Planning board is adjourned. Go, planning board team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Mr. Haller, you cleaned up well. <laughs>